Hello everyone, welcome to the video. This isn't gonna be like my normal video because I usually do cool editing tricks and stuff, but um, this is more of like a talk informational thing. So I'm sorry if you like my editing tricks, they're gonna be a little bit absent in this video. Anyways, I actually wrote a script, so I'm going to be looking at my computer a lot, trying to follow it because my brain can't remember all the things I wrote down. But today we're talking about style. Now, style is a weird thing. Style is not a consistent thing, no matter how consistent some artists may make it seem. Each visual problem that needs to be solved with an illustration may need a different style. Good styles tend to be pretty cohesive across different problems that need to be solved, whereas bad styles tend to be changed up a lot more. Even then, however, those good styles sometimes tend to fail and artists will need to shift them around a little bit. Some examples of this that I think are really good are Studio Ghibli's faces. So you have like their normal face for like Ashitaka and then you have Yubaba's face. Those are two very different people and thus they're gonna have very different styled faces. There's a continuous line of like similar line weight, similar color, similar shading, but the face structure, the body proportions are very different from each other, causing a different style to appear. And that's gonna happen with a lot of other artists too. Like you have eye designs for many artists changing from different characters to different characters. I think a really good example of this is the eye designs of characters in Demon Slayer. They tend to change from character to character because they're different people and they're gonna look a little different and thus the style is gonna change ever so slightly. So before we actually get into talking about how to, the, how to discern your style, it's important to also define what style is. Um, so going along with the previous thing said, style is defined as the artist's method of rendering visual information and solving problems, both visual and conceptual. Um, the second less uh, formal definition is how the artist's art looks. So you can go with either definition. Both work pretty great. What this video explores is how to create a generally cohesive and distinct style for yourself that not only can you be proud of, um, like to draw in, but also be able to market well as an artist. Before we go on, also know that it's okay to change your style from time to time. You are an artist. You have artistic license to do that because you're a creative. Things are going to change because you're going to come up with new, better ideas, and you're also going to need to change your style for different problem-solving things. So if you need to change your style, don't feel like you need to stick with what you have because oftentimes the next thing is a better thing. Not always, but sometimes you get what I'm saying. Don't be scared to change your style. Style does make its way into a couple of things, four things in particular that I would like to point out, and that's line, shading, shape, and color. Those are like the four big ones, and they can be broken down into subcategories of like face proportions, eyeline thickness, saturation of landscapes, whatever you want, etc. Generally though, all things style will fall under those first four. These four can then be applied to different subjects that you can study. Uh, artists can utilize similar styles across subjects. A good example of this would be, hold on, there's a book I wanna get. Jake Morrison, because his landscapes and his animals and his people all generally have like a similar, a similar style in that they all have a slightly light line weight with a flat color palette with pretty stark shading. Um, another example of one that does not keep it consistent across styles is Studio Ghibli. Studio Ghibli has very different landscapes than it has from its actual characters. Style can be broken down into subject as well of humans, landscapes, non-human characters, maps, robots, again, etc. whatever you want. Uh, but also understand that it's it's going to change from subject to subject generally depending on what problem needs to be solved. So knowing all these things then, the get, getting to the meat of the video, what you came here for, how do you define your style? I like to use something I termed the 3x3 three three method 
and I termed it the 3x3 method because I don't actually know what it's called and it seems like an appropriate name. The 3x3 method is this, and I'll show this again later, but essentially you make a square and you put nine boxes within the square and you fill those with art. Now there's two different types of 3x3 studies you can do. You can do a visual study, which is easier, and a process study. So I'll talk about the visual study first. What you do is you pick eight of your favorite artists and you put eight of those artists art in the surrounding squares and then in the middle you put your art. Generally these will want to be from like the same subject so like if you're studying landscapes you put eight landscapes around your landscape. If you're studying portraits you take eight portraits around your portrait. And what you do then is you take out a notebook or a field notes or any sort of writing utensil. You can even type it up on your computer if you're a typing person that likes mechanical keyboards. You could even take out a freaking typewriter if you wanted. But you want some way to get these ideas on paper. You don't want to just let them simmer in your head. Um, and here are the questions that you want to answer when you're looking at these, this three by three square of all this art. What ways does your work look similar to your favorite artist's work, what ways does it not look similar? What type of line, shape, slash color, slash shading does each illustration use? And make sure to do all four for each one, each illustration. What elements are you most drawn to in the illustrations? And how can you apply those elements in your own work? These questions are not the be all end all. You can add to them, you can change them. I just figured they would generally be helpful if you're trying to dig deep. And they're the questions I use when I'm trying to figure out style questions. Because they get at the root of like, what do I like about these drawings? Why am I drawn to them? That was an unintended pun. And it allows me to break it down further and prepares me for a process study, which we'll get to in a sec, of how can I make this art the way it looks in my own art? The next is the process study. This is gonna take much longer because I did, if you follow me on Instagram, you know that I posted this this morning. Um, it takes a very long time. This one took me about 10 hours almost to make and about an hour for each portrait. What you do first is you find seven, not eight artists you like, seven. I don't know why I'm holding four seven seven artists you like in the subject matter that you're researching like i did portraits again landscapes robots etc whatever you want to research and you research their styles you research what they do consistently what they don't do consistently uh, like line width uh, face structure face proportions and then you learn how to apply those to a portrait. So I drew myself. I know it doesn't necessarily look like me. I kind of just did the hair part and like the weird line I have when I have shadow on my face. And then after you do that research, you're going to draw a portrait. So start out first by drawing a the thing that you're studying, whether it be a portrait or a landscape, in your style and put it in the upper corner. And that's your initial sketch that's your initial style marker of what your style looked like before this whole endeavor um, mine's not very good because i didn't spend that much time on it but that's your first style so draw your first portrait in your style and then proceed to do all seven researching those artist styles and drawing your subject in that style and then once you get to the last one what you'll realize by the end is some of the art you think looks really cool, you might not enjoy making. That's what I realized with Studio Ghibli. I think Studio Ghibli's character designs look really cool, but I didn't really have that much fun making them. You'll realize art that you really enjoy making that you might not have expected. I realized that drawing. The Demon Slayer style, I really like drawing it. It was really fun. And so I incorporated that into the final illustration. The final illustration is really important. It's where you take all the things you learn from studying these other styles and you mash them up together. That's why I call it the final mashup. You take all the elements of all the styles you enjoyed and you combine them into your new style, which in this case is this bottom one for me. It's like a watercolor with some cross hatching. You'll find by the end of this process is a deeper understanding of 
how other art is made, as well as what you like about the processes in making each of the portraits or landscapes, whatever subject you do. <sighs> okay, the reason there were a lot of cuts there was because my script was not super clear, so I was kind of all over the place. Anyway, that's the end of the video. If you do any process studies and post them on Instagram, feel free to tag me in them because I love to see stuff like this. Like, this is cool. It's so cool seeing other people take style and make their own stuff with it. I will comment and like your post, so tag me. And if you have any questions or comments, let me know in the comments. I love interacting with you guys. It's my favorite part of this YouTube thing, the community that comes with it. I think that's it. I appreciate you. Peace.